here today in uh, Yerushalayim, in Jerusalem, for uh, the dedication by the third, uh, uh, the Temple Institute and the Sanhedrin of the, the altar of the third temple they're proposing. You'll see in the background uh, with a proposed uh, altar here to dedicate. And uh, in light of uh, evangelical Christians in America uh, who support Israel in a large way, uh, would like to know what the response would be to evangelical Christians that believe that Yeshua is the final sacrifice. מעלה את העבר שזכה בו לכבש הם עולים ויורדים, תמיד עולים לכבש בצד ימין כעת אתם יכולים לראות את הכבש שנשחט, שמים עליו מלח. for what he sees and not for what he hears, but what he smells. He believes that Mashiach ben David is, is coming he's, he, to, to this temple. Mashiach ben David is very soon and he is a Jew and it is, he is not Jesus and uh, if the Christians want to hold it, they can hold it. But we will never change our mind. We prefer to go back to Auschwitz and not to change our religion. This is the main thing. We so are loyal. What would happen to Christians who refuse this Messiah and, and hold on to Jesus? We will see. We will see. I, I don't know. I am not the Messiah. <laughs> you pour over the scriptures because you presume that by them you possess eternal life. Listen, my Christian friends and stuff that are listening to this, you, like I said before, you want to support Israel. Go back 2,000 years ago. It was a Roman pharisaical control of the country. They put our Messiah to death as a result of that under a, a, a conspiracy between the two groups. There were a remnant of Jews that believed that Yeshua indeed was the Messiah. They were persecuted, in some cases to death, for what they believed. Now, we are on the same setup like it was 2,000 years ago. There was a Sanhedrin in control then. There was a Roman authority that was in cooperation with the Sanhedrin. As it is today, same thing. There, there is a high priest back then. They had the 71 in the Sanhedrin, and they were doing all the laws, and, and all the capital punishment went to the Roman authority to carry out. All right, same thing will be done today. Capital punishment will be carried out by a Roman or a Gentile authority, and they're putting those Noahide laws there to be able to do just that. And who's going to be the target? Like it was 2,000 years ago. The true believers of Yeshua were the target of the laws. 
And that's what's going to happen again now. It is very dangerous. And for you to support this, and to support, instead of your, your, your Jewish brothers and sisters in Israel that are standing for Christ, that are going to end up being drugged into the courts nice. because they believe Yeshua to be the Son of God, to be deity. You know, for them, no, they, maybe because they, will, they can use the technicality that they're not Jews because they believe in Yeshua and they can have them beheaded anyway. But even if they accept them as Jews, they're either going to force them to convert back or they're going to be uh, uh, put into prisons and tortured, etc. This is what you support. You really got to think about how serious this law is. Yeah. It's this, the same. It, the history is picking up where it left off. And Yeshua will come, and when he does come, and he sees what you have chosen. Have you chosen Barabbas, the murderer? The law is a murderous law. The Noahide law is a murderous law that will be turned loose on the believers. Yes, and they already have their trolls who are coming everywhere where it's spoken about Noahide laws to kind of say, that's not true, this is not really happening, you know, stuff like that. So yeah, they just already to have their, their, their agents who are trying to sway your opinion, even though there is unbelievable proven factual information that these laws are put into our law system and they're working on them worldwide. These are the very words that testify about me, yet you refuse to come to me to have life. I do not accept glory from men, but I know you, that you do not have love of Elohim within you. I have come in my Father's name, and you have not received me. But if someone else comes in his own name, you will receive him. How can you believe if you accept glory from one another, yet do not seek the glory that comes from the only Elohim? Senate will come to order. Members of this prestigious body, the United States Senate, convene here in the spirit of one of the seven Noahide laws, which was set forth by you as an eternal universal code of ethics for all mankind, that every society be governed by just law. The Noahide Laws, a system of governance for the Gentile world, widely accepted by political leaders. Are non-Jews obligated to keep the seven Noahide laws, and if they are, how are they supposed to know that they're obligated to keep them, and how are they supposed to know what they are? Well, every person in the world has to keep the seven Noahide laws. Yeah, that this is just part one of one world government, okay? This particular part of the one world government is the part that believers need to be concerned with because we need to know what the Noahide laws are and what their basis is and whether or not they have any relevance in our life. But this is what is taking place here as part of the one world government is the establishment of the judicial branch of the one world government. Now, 
the push that is on right now, and it's a push that is becoming wildly successful, is to make the nascent Sanhedrin, a group of 70 uh, elders in Judaism, together with their 24 acolytes, the judiciary, the worldwide judiciary, to replace the UN Council of the UN, you know, UN, uh, the UN judiciary is uh, essentially a, a facade anyway. It doesn't function at all, or very little. It has no teeth, and it, it rarely has uh, sets any precedent. So the nascent Sanhedrin have said, we will be the worldwide judiciary. We will be the worldwide judiciary, and we will rule Praise, uh, you know, uh, predicated upon the Noahide placement. Now, what does this mean? It means two laws, okay? The Torah, as defined in the Talmud for confessions of Judaism, those who are in, the Ju in Judaism, they will be adjudicated under the Talmud. The rest of the dogs out there, the second-class citizens, the lumpen proletariat, me and you, we will be adjudicated under the Noahide laws according to the nascent Sanhedrin. And they claim that this is moral. They claim that they are the moral authority and that the Noahide laws are moral. Okay, so what are the Noahide laws? The Noahide laws, the so-called seven laws of Noah, are Jewish supremacist laws from the Babylonian Talmud and command non-Jews to set up courts which are at least theoretically supposed to execute non-Jews who do not follow Jewish scripture. My husband, Bill Dannemeyer, was in Congress on the day that the Noahide laws were passed. And many people don't know what the law, Noahide laws are. They are completely uh, oblivious to what is coming down the pike. They don't know. Christians particularly are in the dark. And that's because they don't understand what's going on in the world. And one reason is that their churches are really run from behind by the Jews. And so the pastors and all don't know and they are not telling their parishioners. Here's what happened. And first, maybe we should go into what the Noahide laws do. Yes. Noahide yes. laws say, one of the Noahide laws say that, um, that anyone who worships Jesus Christ is committing idolatry. Correct. Correct. And if you read the fine print, and on Jewish websites, you will find that idolatry is, um, the penalty for it is beheading. Now, in, um, in about 90, I think it was 91, my husband was in Congress from 1979 to 1992. On the day that this bill was signed, he was actually on the House floor, and all the congressmen were told that that would be the last vote of the day before the Noahide laws ever came up. They were told, all of the votes are over and you can go home. So the day that this was passed, None of it came up in the right with the regular congressmen. They were all told to go home. And then four congressmen stayed behind by themselves without the knowledge of anybody else and brought up this bill. But then it says the Noahide laws are the basis of the government of the United States. Well, that's not right. But it says that in this law. 
it's the Ten Commandments that are the basis for the government of our country, not the Noahide laws. So these Noahide laws then were passed, and the one, the one of the Noahide laws that is the worst one is the one I mentioned before. People don't understand that, uh, yes, idolatry is a bad thing, and people say we shouldn't worship idols and all that, but they don't understand that the Jews consider worship of Jesus Christ idolatry. And I saw the souls of them, that were beheaded as a witness for Yahusha, and for the word, of Elohim, and which had not worshipped the beast. Neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads, or in their hands. My name is Donald Trump, and I'm a big fan of Israel. And frankly, a strong prime minister is a strong Israel. And you truly have a great prime minister. In Benjamin Netanyahu, there's nobody like him. Shalom, Israel Republicans. I'm Governor Mike Pence. It's a great honor for Donald Trump and I to stand together with you tonight in support of Israel. Well, since 1949, Washington's provided Israel with more than $120 billion in financial aid. The annual donation is around $3 billion. You only get $3 billion. And I said, Brian, that's only the foreign aid bill. Look at all the other trade compacts, economic assistance, military assistance. I'm saying this to you right now. Israel gets approximately $15 billion a year from the American taxpayers. That $15 billion is $30,000 for every man, woman, and child. People in my district are losing their pension benefits. He may be the worst thing to ever happen to Israel, believe me. Believe me. We will move the American embassy to the eternal capital of the Jewish people, Jerusalem. But I believe that Israel has a powerful stranglehold on the American government. They control both members of the House, the House and the Senate. They have us involved in wars of which we have little or no interest. Our children are coming back in body bags. Our nation is bankrupt over these wars. And if you open your mouth, you get targeted. And if they don't beat you at the poll, they'll put you in prison. And if someone doesn't look into this, the American people should be ashamed of themselves. When you allow one American to be violated, you threaten the freedoms of every American. And I can't understand this, why no one in Congress is raising their voice. There is a special antagonism between the Talmud and Jesus. The Talmud attacks him everywhere it can. No! <laughs> Even his mother. Mary, the Talmud says, was a whore who mated with carpenters. She who was the descendant of princes and governors played the harlot with carpenters. It naturally followed that the scribes declared Christ to be a bastard. In its article on Jesus, the Jewish encyclopedia says that Jewish writings defame Christ. It is the tendency of all these sources to belittle the person of Jesus by ascribing to him illegitimate birth, magic, and a shameful death. Jesus, according to this article, was considered one of the three worst enemies of Judaism who came to an ignoble end. The Talmud says they subjected him to four deaths, stoning, burning, decapitation, and strangling. The Talmud also says he is now in hell, punished with boiling hot excrement.
spoken English. Do you believe that the Gentiles, the Goyim, will one day become the slaves of the Jews? It's not a belief. It's, it's, gonna, it's part of the Torah. Okay. Not a slave, like a slave today. The, we're like uh, going to beat them and then they get become a slave. They're going to see how much the Torah is meaningful. Uh -huh. And they don't want the Jewish person to uh, work. So they say, we help you in everything and you learn Torah. It's going to be a, a big, big world peace. Every year, beginning in 1978, the Rebbe's birthday has been declared as Education Day by the President of the United States. What does the Rebbe himself make of all the pomp and circumstance? In the declaration with the Mont Frier, this is the best and the earnest of our canon. So, this was on the tone in the announcement of the President Bereshon, as a Zen, as a home, as a real given, and their own wise and gesungen and given, and durgefeel given, was a deep of freedom and comfort. So, the befriedigung was me con geben und me dav geben und me geht. Me da akkoras teilo, akkoras teilo bidwari. Durch ich dich in dem Dank für dem Covid. Und für das, als du, und für das Durchführen und Machen sein. Die Sache mit dem Ziel, für das, was ich gegründet geworden, begründet geworden. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty Elohim, Father and Prince of peace. Glory to Elohim in the highest, on earth peace and goodwill toward men.
my kingdom is not of this world. My servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But right now, my kingdom is not from here. For when they say, peace and safety, then suddenly, destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Thank you.